A few months ago, I did a post on exposure, and in particular, the importance of exposing to the right, or exposing the image as brightly as possible without blowing out the highlights. And I used this image as an example of where I did nail the exposure. As you can see from the histogram here, it's as far to the right as possible without blowing out the highlights. Now my point with this particular image was, I, the exposure was great, but it doesn't look like much on the back of the camera. But because I know I have the highest quality information possible by exposing to the right, then I can go work on it in Lightroom and very quickly make it look much more appealing. I showed the before, and then I also, in the post, I showed the after. Okay, So you can see that there's a tremendous amount of information there to work with. Now one of my readers asked that I explain how I got from before to after, so I thought I would actually work this image here in Lightroom in a video today. I'll go back to the before, and the first thing I'm going to try to do is darken the dark tones in the image. So I'll go to the Basics panel, and I'll start by sliding the black slider to the right. So that darkens the darkest tones of the image. But as you can see, it's not doing that much in this image. It brings a little detail in, but the histogram has so far to go before the dark tones in the image, in other words, the light gray tones, get anywhere close to black, that that really doesn't do very much. But that's my first step. Next, I'll go down to brightness and contrast. I'll reduce the brightness of the image, and then it's looking very flat. So I'll go ahead and increase contrast. I think I'll bring it all the way up to the right here. And then I'll just kind of adjust brightness to get it to look um, as, as good as possible. Notice how I've really stretched out the histogram. The bright tones have stayed bright, but now the darker tones have gotten darker. That's in fact what contrast is in an image. Okay. Next I'll come down. I think I want to add actually some more contrast to the image. It still looks a little flat to me. But my contrast slider is all the way to the right here, so I can't go any further with that. I can go down to the tone curve to add more contrast. Expand the tone curve here. Scroll back up so you can see it. Now, to add contrast, I'm going to brighten the bright tones and darken the dark tones. If you don't understand the curve itself, I have a post called Introduction to Curves that I wrote in late January, so you can search for that. So I'm going to click and drag on the light tones here in the, in the tone curve and bring them up. And then I'll click and drag on the dark tones to bring them down. And then I'll look at the before and after here. Before, after. So it definitely gets some more punch to it. I feel like the dark tones have gotten a little too dark. So I'll just bring that up a little bit. Then I'll look at the before and the after. Okay. So that's looking good to me. I think I'll go back to the basics panel now and continue in my general workflow here by coming down to presence. Now clarity adds some three-dimensionality to the image. So if you watch either along the, um, the ripples in the sand here or up at the waves as I slide clarity all the way to the right, you can see that it just adds a little bit of three-dimensionality. It's a pretty flat image so it can't really do too much here. Um, so I'll add some clarity. You do want to be careful with clarity if you have an image that already has pretty well-defined edges. What this is doing is adding contrast to the edge, darkening the dark side of the edges, brightening the bright side. And sometimes if you give it too much, you can end up with some really ugly shadows along the edges in your image. But in this case, I don't feel like I'm in danger of that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and slide it all the way up. Now, I'll add some vibrance. Vibrance uh, increases the intensity of colors. It's less heavy-handed than saturation. I also have a blog post discussing uh, the differences between the two. But I'll go ahead and increase that some. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is try to bring out the yellows in, in the left side here a little bit more. So I'm going to go down to HSL. I'll click on the word HSL. And I'm interested in saturating them. So I'll make sure that I have saturation selected here from Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Luminance is brightness and darkness, by the way. So I'm going to increase saturation. I could slide the slider and hope that it is yellow over there. Seems to be. But rather than guess, I'll grab the targeted adjustment tool, click on it here, and I'll click and drag upward to increase saturation in that area of the image, or for those tones in the image. So when I click and drag up in that area, it saturates the colors that it finds underneath where I click and drag everywhere in the image. So there really isn't much color there, so it can't do a lot. But you can see that over here in the panel that it found both orange and yellow and saturated those some more. 
Next, I want to darken down this section of the image. I feel like it's just a little too prominent. I want the viewer to kind of um, to come back to the to the guy in the image and and the o the ocean and the loneliness of the scene. So I feel like um, this part grabs the eye for a little bit too long. So I'm going to darken that. And if I use HSL to darken the blues in the image, it's going to darken the blues everywhere, including in the foreground here, back here by the mountains. And I just want to focus on that the center area. So instead of using HSL, I'm going to use the adjustment brush. So I'll click on it here in the in the tool drawer. And what I want to do is decrease exposure. So I'll slide exposure to the left, but notice how nothing's happening in the image. That's because I'm specifying what, but I haven't yet specified where. So I have to kind of guess on the amount here um, because I can't see can't see what I'm doing yet. So I'll start with minus 0.2. And then I'll use my left and right bracket keys to adjust the size of my brush, and I'll paint in the image. Okay, and as you can see, it's very, it's very dark. But now that I can see what I'm doing, I can come back to the exposure slider and back off on it a little bit. Okay, so if I look at the before and after, so before, after, I feel like that just reduces the emphasis on that part just a little bit. All right, I'll put the adjustment brush away. I also feel like this top right corner is drawing my eye too much. You know, when you have a, a bright area of the image that's near the edge, the eye tends to go to that part of the image and then leave the image completely. I want the viewer to come back and focus on, on the man in here. So I'm going to darken down this corner. I could do it with the adjustment brush, but because it's an opportunity to show you uh, another tool, I'm going to use instead the graduated filter tool. Click on the graduated filter, and again, I'm going to specify what. By the way, if with the graduated filter or the adjustment brush, your panel here looks like this with buttons instead of sliders, click on the switch, switch it to the slider view, and never switch it back. I don't find that button view to be useful at all, and in fact, it goes away in Lightroom 3. All right, so the what here is also reducing exposure. Again, I don't know how much. So I'll set it to negative 0.3. And then I'm going to click right here in the image and drag downward at an angle to, um, to activate this filter. Now what's happened is that I clicked here and I dragged to here. Everything above where I clicked and dragged is fully affected. Everything below where I clicked and dragged is completely unaffected. And then there's an area of transition where there's a, a fading of the effect between where I clicked and dragged. Now once I've clicked and dragged to draw the filter, I can adjust the filter as I need to. So I don't need to get it perfect immediately. I can click and drag on this center line to twist it some more. I can move the whole filter by clicking and dragging on uh, the, the pin. And then I can adjust how wide the area of transition is by clicking and dragging on the top or the bottom line. All right, so now I've got the the uh, the where. Now I can come back and reduce the amount of the darkening. And if I try it with just minus 0.1, let's look at the before and after with this switch here. I feel like that's probably enough. Let's come on, come in here, click in the box, and make it negative 0.15 just to see if that that helps. Okay. All right, I'm going to come back in here and move the filter down a little bit so I get a little bit more darkening in here and I'm going to call it done. I'm going to put away the graduated filter tool and uh, leave it at that. Okay. So the last thing I would do now that I can see detail in the image I would go ahead and clean up areas that I find distracting. So right here I feel like there's this pattern in the sand that's distracting and then if I click and drag to move up there's a rock here and maybe this little one here that can go as well. So I'm going to use the Spot Removal tool for that. I'll click on the Spot Removal tool. And I start with Heal. And then if I have issues with it, I'll switch to Clone. And I think we may end up with an issue at some point during this, this demo of the Spot Removal tool that I can show you what I mean. I'm using my left bracket key to reduce the size of the, uh, of the brush. You also have the size slider in the panel there. Okay. Now you want opacity at 100 because you want to completely eliminate uh, the spot or the rock in this case. So I'm making my brush bigger than the rock so there's some room for the, the fix to fade out on the edges. I'll click once 
And notice how I get a second circle. This is what I fixed, and this second circle is the source of the clean pixels that Lightroom decided to use. So I'll type H to hide my circle, and it, it doesn't look bad at all. I feel like I've kind of lost the line here that I had. So I'll type H to get the circles back. I'll click and drag on the source circle and say, don't take it from up there. Take the fix from down here. And then I can type H. And um, I think we have a pretty good fix there. Maybe I'll bring this in just a little bit. Okay. Now I'll use the space bar to get my hand tool back. Click and drag to come down to this other area. Get a smaller brush with my left bracket key. Type H to get the circles back. And this I just need to play with a little bit to um, to get 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 it from an area that doesn't look obvious. Okay. That looks very obvious, and of course the pressure of being on a video here makes makes it more difficult. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I think I would work on this a little bit, but remember how zoomed in we are as well. Once we zoom out, no one's going to see that fix. So I'll type the space bar. I'll hold the spacebar down, rather, come over to this area. Now this is a pretty big area to fix, but I'm going to go ahead and try try doing it in one fix, once with one circle. Why not? If it doesn't work, I can always come back and use smaller overlapping circles. So I'll go ahead and click on the area I want to fix, and of course it looks terrible, but I'll type H to get my uh, source circle, and I'll bring it over to this area. Okay. See how you have this bleeding here up at the top? That's what I mean um, when I say that uh, occasionally the healing brush uh, doesn't work. It, it tends to pull in the tones from around the edges and can cause that, that bleeding look. I'll click on Clone and I end up with a much better result. Okay, So I'll zoom back out. I'm zooming out with Control minus. You can open your navigator panel and use that, but Control plus and minus zoom as well. Okay. So I think I'm going to call this image done. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the before and after. What I'll do is hit the backslash key above the enter key to show you before. I'll hit again and there's after. I hope this video has been useful to you. Uh, I plan to do more videos so look for them on my blog.